time to check in with Ross Greenwood, host of Business Now, which follows this program. Ross, great to see you. Mike Cannon Brooks and Brookfield today walking away from that high profile takeover bid after offering close to $9 billion. Can you explain the logic of that decision there? Yeah, it's really quite interesting, this, and there's a few questions to be answered about it, Kieran. The first thing is that they've made two bids. This second bid over the weekend was 10% higher than the first, um, and effectively it was rejected by the AGL board over the weekend, and so they simply said, right, that's it, we'll pick up our bat and ball and go home. So they've walked out the door. Now, Mike Cannonbrooks today said they've put their pens down, so that, I wonder, raises questions about whether they'll come back again with a different bid or a different offer. But there's a few things here in this takeover. The first thing is the objectives. Number one would be to make money. Number two was they wanted to stop the demerger of AGL. So AGL, in by June this year, is seeking to split itself in two. So the coal-fired power stations and all the rest of the, some of their generating assets will go into a business called Axel Energy. The retail arm and other gener generating assets will go into a second business, which will be called AGL Australia. Now, they wanted to stop that. That was quite clear. And then the final part about their ambition was to try and close AGL's coal-fired power stations well ahead of time, perhaps by as early as 2030. Now, it's interesting when you contemplate all of these things because I did speak with Stuart Upson, who is the managing partner of Brookfield, a couple of weeks ago, and he just explained all of that stuff as their ambitions as they're going in. Have a listen to this. We would stop the demerger. We think it's very important to keep the company together because there's so many different elements that need to occur to successfully transition in a way that ensures uh, grid stability, uh, power prices stay low, uh, and we don't uh, impact the customers of AGL. And so our plan is to buy the company uh, as a whole, uh, to operate it as it is, um, whilst coming up with uh, the development of the replacement capacity ourselves. We'll invest another $10 plus billion plus to put in place the replacement capacity ourselves and only retire the existing plants as and when that replacement capacity is in place uh, and we're not going to have an impact on the customers of AGL in the country. But the riddle here and the little thing that hasn't been answered properly, Kieran, is why would they launch bids for $9 billion plus want to spend more money mm -hmm. on the business in the future yep. but not have bought a single share in the company? So they hadn't gone and acquired 10% or 15% to have stopped that merger. They bought none. And that's the rather interesting curio of this whole takeover talk so far. Yeah, that is unusual. And what about the plan that the plan to split the, the good... AGL from the bad AGL, if, if you call it that. Will that still go ahead? Well, well, that's the big question now because I've been talking to shareholder groups and a lot of them really can't see the sense of it because the problem is if you have old AGL, um, effectively their cost of capital is going up, the pressure of ageing coal-fired power stations and trying to raise more money just to keep them going is going to be fascinating. I wonder whether this ultimately becomes a, a political debate for the government itself. But we'll put some of that to Damien Nix, who is the Chief Financial Officer of AGL. I'll be speaking with him very, very shortly, 4.30 on Business Now. So uh, we'll get, hopefully, yeah. a few of the answers that we need right now.